That will finish. That will finish. We're almost there. We have three more psukim. And then we're going to go to Rashi on Perak Bet. Okay, then we'll, then we'll read Perak Bet again. Um, we'll see it inside, see the chapter. To. Yalla. So um, enjoy. Amen. And with the God. So, so um, I want to say that, that, that the, the Malbim here says that it's very interesting, at the very end of the Malbim Pasig Gimel. You guys have the Malbim on Pasig Gimel? You have to find him. That's, that's Rashi. Here. Idan has the Malbim there on Pasig Gimel. Pasig Gimel. Good. You got to pretty much we got to the end, right? We were, we were like right there. Yeah. So, so we're the Malbim on Pasig Gimel. Got it? Good. So we're towards the end of it. Okay, we talked yesterday about this uh, this concept of the 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 merkava, right? Mamash. Zayn yana merkava shetzava yishayal v'chizkel. This concept of 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 man reigning over his problem, uh, his problems, his powers, the powers of his body, and really being in control. And then Hashem is a, a reaction to that. Um, which really goes into the realm of the mis- mysticism, like mamash Jewish mysticism. Even though the Malbim is not really, he's sort of talking on a theoretical level, but you understand that the Malbim is talking about the interplay between the spiritual situation of man and, and the spiritual, spiritual situation in the world. And Betzim, the way Hashem reacts to us, he, he reacts to us in a sense almost, and that Hashem has what he's doing in the world, but he will work according to what we do. It's bemete a... a uh, It's a serious statement, okay? I said it last time and the last week. I'm going to say it in the beginning of this week again. It's one of the more powerful parts of, of, of what the Malbim says here. Because um, even though if, until now he's sort of talking theological and we were talking about as interesting as it is, but here suddenly he says that the way Hashem is going to, is going to um, act in this world really has to do how we act in the world. Now, we know that sort of. We say it every day. But in this sense, he's in the level of of, of hashgacha. If I remind you guys, he's the Malbim talks about two levels of hashgacha. He talks about the level of hashgacha, meaning providence, right? Meaning uh, Hashem's leading of the world. So it, on one level, l- l- he says that that um, there's a lefiat uh, teva. Okay, it doesn't mean Hashem's not there or Hashem's not seeing it, but for for all purposes and all points and purposes, things work. We talked about how how how, how we usually work, right? You have to do X so that you get Y. You have to learn history. You have to learn sociology. You have to learn psychology. You have to learn philosophy. You have to learn uh, political philosophy. And political philosophy and all kinds of things you have to learn so that you know how the world works. And that's how the world, and that's how you go through the world. And better than ever. <laughs> and we have, and we've come made some cake for you. Um, we're out of copies, so uh, there's a lot of shame. Uh, <laughs> everyone, everyone, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> you already read, and you'll get this. Yeah, so. We're going to get it. It's you. So, what do you say? The said, so, so I'm going to just finish up the, the, the Ramam says, not the Ramam, the Malbim says here that, that so one's way of the world working is through the ways we're used to it. The other way is really Hashem breaking reality in a sense. And Hashem appearing in reality, he doesn't break reality, he appears in reality to our eyes. We said the Six Day War maybe is on the break of, of reality there. It's something that's almost miraculous. It works through the tools of this world, but it was almost in the realm of, I would say, the Tanakhic miracles, right? You can very calmly see the story of the Six Day War in Yoshua or Shoftim or Shmuel. It would have fit very easily into the into that context, that's that's what we're talking about. When you see Yad Hashem, I mean, you just see it. It's there. You, it's clear that Hashem is doing something. You see there that th- these kinds of pictures. Um, that Yad he says that's a possibility of, of, of experiencing reality, but it has to do with how much we do ourselves. And other we can't say we then say, Hey Hashem, I want to eat whatever I want to eat, as many pieces of coffee cake as I can. I want to sleep as much as I sleep. I want to do whatever I want. But you appear. Hey, where are you, Hashem? I don't see you, right? It's a, the classic Tana. Oh, if only Hashem would appear, I would, uh, 
I would believe. Now Hashem says, if only you would get your act together, and I will appear. So there, it's, it's, it's a dual uh, motion here. So, but anyway, so what do we do in this time when Hashem isn't present? This is what he says. At the very end is a point, an interesting point, okay? Ube'et. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six lines from the bottom. Not including the short line. So for like, whatever, seven lines from the bottom. Towards the end of the sentence it says, Ube'et shetivim. You guys see it? Ube'et shetivim mitgabrim ba'olamo, taktanim. Tzunu omar shanefashot nimshachim achrei ha'teva. Right? When we don't control our teva, we don't control our natural inclinations. Uh, in order to, to try to conquer the chomer. Right? And then so far the, the world will be a natural world. And it's covered up, the, the, the Hashgacha providence is covered up with a with a meutefet, with a covering, with a with a klipa, with a uh, with a shell of what looks like normal reality. So then, that, that now he's going back to the wording of the of the of, the, of Shira Shirim, right? It says kitapuach batzayar. Remember, tapuach batzayar. The tapuach is the providence, but it's atzayar. So they're all covering. In other words, you don't feel the the shade from the apple tree when you have all these massive trees all around. So there. The end of the pasuk, right? It says, "Ketapuach beatzei yar kein dodi ben abanim v'tziloch imadeti v'yashavti." I sat in his in his uh, in his cell in his uh, shade. Upiryom atok lechiki. So he says, even in the situation when you're betapuach beatzei yar, you could still enjoy the fruit. It's still we sweet. So what's the fruit here? And here's an interesting thing. Upriyo metok lichi. Pri ashkacha. Pri kodesh. Yehulu nefashot akeot lamachal u letufa. Ki askilu betorato u mitzvotav. Bedrachav anagotav. Vilmedu yirat Hashem vabato. Vilchal mi pri etza chayim vichyu. Says Amalbim, in the situation of a world that's covered, there is one way of still holding on to this, this, uh, this, this presence of Hashem, and that's through the Torah and mitzvot. The Torah and mitzvot are like a fruit that you could like, it's like a, an oxygen fruit. You put it to your mouth, and you could breathe oxygen. When you do Torah and mitzvot, even in a world that's sort of covered up, you can still see, smell, hear Hashem in the world. It's not the situation of, of the straight up, it's not. As I guess remind, I remind you, the Torah and mitzvot, he has very rarely spoken about them here. He's not, the Malvim has not been big in Torah and mitzvot until now. He hasn't really said much about them. He's much more on this, this, this nevuah. That's really what interests him in, in Shira Shirim, prophecy. Um, where does Torah and mitzvot fit into prophecy? So we've seen a couple crossroads where they, where, they, where they connect. But he sees it in a sense as a poor man's... Uh, a poor man's... Uh, um, Tachlif, instead of substitute, a poor man substitute. Now the Torah and mitzvot keep you going when you don't see Hashem, when Hashem isn't so present. Then the Torah and mitzvot are, are your oxygen tank. Then they, they let you still see what's going on. Halvai, halvai, in a sense, we would get to the situation where the providence is clear, the connection with Hashem is clear, prophecy is clear, it's right there, it's present. That's really what we want to be. But when you're not in that saying, the Torah mitzvot allow us to, to remember what really is and what's supposed to be important. So that's, that's an important statement. I think also now, learning Torah and mitzvot have a, uh, they're prevent oxygen in a sense. I, I think I feel it on a personal level, right? Your life could be sort of like, you know, life is going, life is moving ahead. Right now we're all in yeshiva, or some of us are in yeshiva. We're not we're all in yeshiva anyway, um, but, but we're, we're, we're there. But when you go into, into life, as you've all been in life in different places, life sort of is life. Life happens. And the, the beliefs and the truisms and the spirituality is very hard to keep going within the, the recipe of life. Um, and in that sense, the Torah and the Mitzvot really are, are oxygen. You, you dive into the Torah and suddenly you remember, wow, that's right, there's a God. And 
And they're either in tefillah, right? In tefillah, when you actually think of what you're saying, we're learning this in Kriyat Shema now in class, right? When you actually think of what you're saying in Kriyat Shema, wow, that's like serious things I'm saying here. Um, and, and, it, and, it, and it reminds you of what really is on a deeper level, even though your eyes, ears, senses, society seems to be saying a lot of other things. There's a famous midrash where Hashem says, "Halvayo ti azavu v'torati shamaru." Hashem says, "Pseda, leave me, forget me, don't believe in me. At least keep my Torah." <laughs> like, what, what does that mean? And this is what it means, really, in a sense. It means he says, "Shama or sheba machziram mutav." The, the light that's in it can bring them back. Now, the Torah, in a sense, to, to try to jump, jump into God is a huge jump. Belief has its struggles. I mean, in a sense, we're, like, we're not in agreement like what we really think. Like, if you, if you look at a, if you look at Rambam and the other side, the Kuzari, it's two different things. The thing, like, the two theology is, is... Two different concepts of God. Right. Yeah. But the Torah and Mitzvot are the, the same in that same. sense. So if you keep it, then can. we can discuss what we believe in. So, uh, if, that's another aspect of it. But now I'm saying it more on the aspect of that the, theolo- that, 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 that the belief or the seeing of Hashem is a higher level. That is something the Malbim is searching for. He's searching for the prophetic level. Is it like uh, doing mitzvah out of love? Where would that play into this? It would still play in the realm of Torah mitzvot. How so that you would do it out of love, but it's still you're not doing it out of flat out recognition of Hashem being right there, usually. I don't, I'm, just, I'm just saying it's a different. It's a, it's it's not it's not a contrary to what you're saying, but it's usually not the state of mind we're talking about. When we're talking about pro- prophecy, okay? Prophecy is a different level of being that he's that he wants. But said, let's go back. Okay, so so after all this, uh, we're going to actually get to the prophecy itself. We we sort of we sort of going in. Just talking to my wife about how how Malbians, even though he goes into the nitty gritty here. If I had to ask you guys to summarize what he said here, oh, it would be very difficult. He's sort of going in and out and around and using the Mishalim of Shir Shirim to each time to talk about a different aspect of, of this point that he's talking about, of the breaking of the, 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 our reality into a higher reality. It's sort of hard. Even I, I myself, I wouldn't be able to summarize it in, in, a, in a structural way at the moment. All kinds of interesting ideas coming out. Um, I, bet it's, I bet it's more structural than I think, but it's still meandering a little bit. So we're still meandering a little. Hold on. Next pasuk, okay? Heviani ha-melech hadarav nagid ha-mismechav bo, nachon? Ki achar advarim ha-ele Sikha, heviani al-beit ha-yayin v'diglu alai ha-ava, sorry. The next pasuk, pasuk dalet. Ki achar advarim ha-ele nizgavim. Hechel ruach Hashem amin dalet. You guys with me? Ki achar advarim ha-ele nizgavim. After these great things. Hechel ruach Hashem lefaem al nefesh shlomo v'uchna al chibur Elohim. Again, he says for the up- upteenth time, and whenever it says yain, it's talking about prophecy. Okay, that's what yain is throughout Shira Shirim. Beta yain. Anything that has to do with grapes, kramim, we'll see later. Anything that has to do with grapes is kashur to prophecy. So, okay, that's what we're talking about all the time. I jumped over the parentheses. Says there are points of, of uh, that Hashem brings him closer, and then right before the prophecy, I'm, I'm going a little quicker here. Okay, next pasuk. Um, so. Rabduni, right, again. Samchuni ba'ashishot rabduni betapuchim ki cholat ava ani. That's the pasuk. So, um, prop me up with ashishot. Ashishot are things that are connected to the wine, like wine glasses. Rabduni betapuchim. He, uh, he, he cushioned me with, with tapuchim, okay, with apples. All right, so we have, we have the wine and we have the apples. And he's going to play off the two of them here again. And he says, listen, there, there, in the connection with Hashem, there is the wine connection, which is where we're always going. What he said in the beginning, that wine is uh, a, a poor man's substitute for prophecy. What happens in, with wine? You lose a, a certain conception. You go deeper. You, you feel 
you're in a different reality, that's just the mashal that they can use for prophecy. When you have prophecy, you have, you're drunk better. <laughs> better than drunk. That's really what he says. Okay, that's why wine is used as the mashal all the time here. So, so against again, he's saying there's both, in this, in this statement, there's both wine and not wine. So he's going to say what's going on. Ve'arech, <clears throat> so, so the, oh, the, the smell, which is tapuchim, always have to do with smell, okay? And, 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 the, and, and the wine is, there's wine and smell. Shayayin yamlitz ha-shef ha-refui, ve'arech yamlitz tamid al-askala, al-yedei ha-chakira ve'ha-iyun. It's the, it's the, the mind's ability to comprehend. She'yarichu et uchaniyot ha-shem mirachok. So what's the request here? I mean, the end, end of the second line. That's what they're asking. I want to be connected to the prophecy. Now that, that he's managed to disconnect from the bodily functions, he's finally managed to be sort of Pashut and 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 bifshot et achomer. Take off the chomer. Take off the, the the physicality of life. He's waiting for. This is what he wants. Now he wants the the the, the prophecy itself. Now he's gotten to the situation where prophecy, and he doesn't want. He doesn't want them through the mind. He want, and here he's saying, I understand, or I know, not understand, I know that I, I'm also going to comprehend Hashem in my mind and, and understand things and through, the, through the, 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 the ability of comprehension, but that's not what I want to be the main thing. I want the prophecy to be my main connection with you, Hashem. I want the Samchuni Bashishot. I understand at some point I'm going to be also thinking and, and thinking, but not now. Not now. It's sort of like when someone's in love with someone else, as a mashal, right? He says, that's, the, that's what he says. When you're in love, you don't want to think about it, in a sense. You don't want to diagnose, diagnose your, your love, your feelings of love. It's, if the minute you do that, you're not really there. Love in itself is an experience that is very hard to define, right? I am in love. Oh, someone sits down and goes, explain to me what that means. You go, okay, what does it mean? Well, it means I'm thinking about her a lot, and it means, but nothing you're going to say is really going to be what you love. It's not, you're not going to be able to portray what you're talking about. The prophecy, as he said again and again, is a level of connection with Hashem that is incomprehensible within the terms of language, and, and right, we talked we talk about the words, how words are impossible to use, right? When we talked about their cheeks are, are, are Navule Chayaich Batorim, Savarech Bacharuzim. The way the Malbim explained that is your cheeks and your throat, yeah, it's not enough. It's beautiful, but it's not, it doesn't manage to portray what I want to say because it's not. So he says, even though I understand there's going to be a mind issue here and I'm going to have to comprehend Hashem in some way, and it's actually good to do that also, it's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for cholata ava. That's what I am. Cholata ava. I want the wine. I don't want. I don't want the the, the mind. Uh, so here he says the same thing. Small and yamin. Smolo tachat leroshi v'minot echabkeni. The same. Uh, the same idea as the wine and the, and the apples. Okay, the yain and the tapuach. The same thing is the yamin and the small. The yamin is the the close connection with Hashem, and the small is the more uh, rational or human-oriented or, or whatever, physicality-oriented connection to the show. When I say physicality, I'm not talking about our stomach, right? I'm talking about physical. I'm using all our abilities to comprehend the world through our human abilities, pretty much. It's, it's a very high level. It's not like a little, it's not like someone who, you know, is just learning a little Torah and thinks he knows who Hashem is. We're talking about someone who really learns and is connected to Hashem through that. It's a connection. But again, it's all, it all... It's deeper than the learned man. What? Shlomo Amelach is a Navi. Th this is what he's talking He's talking about Shlomo wrote Shira Shirim as an ode to prophecy. That's what Shira Shirim is. 
It says, oh, that he only experienced a couple of times. Shlomo didn't experience it so much. That's why he's so interested. And as maybe another prophet wouldn't have written the same thing. Another prophet who's experienced it time and time again, it's sort of more ragil for him. But Shlomo, who is like, wow, and he's also the, the smartest of all men, right? It's always a question, right? Shlomo is a chami kol adam. So what about Moshe Rabbeinu? Was he smarter than Moshe Rabbeinu? It was his word. What's the answer? No. Right. The answer is that, is that Moshe Rabbeinu had prophecy. There was no prophet like Moshe Rabbeinu. Shlomo was a chacham mikol adam. He was a chacham mikol adam. But in that sense, with the Malbim clearly in the, in, the, in, the, in the... If you give a hierarchy, then Moshe is way above that. In other words... You can't call the prophecy of Moshe prophecy. What? Prophecy that Moshe had, it's not prophecy, it's totally different. It's, well, it, even within prophecy, what Moshe has is even higher. But Moshe Rabbeinu had a diff, completely different connection with Hashem than the Chacham. Shlomo HaMelech, what's unique about him, what's amazing, is he's so articulate. That's what he is, he's a Chacham. He's so articulate, he manages to take the prophetic experience and spell it out. Now we see how hard it is as we're trying to break down all these musagim of Shira Shirim and all the poetic lines he uses here. It's not so easy to do. But, but he manages to give it some wording to the prophetic experience. That, that's sort of what we could say. Moshe Rabbeinu didn't, even, didn't live in the world of Chochmah almost in that sense, even though in Kabbalah he's, he's often has Kesher to Chochmah. But in a sense, Moshe Rabbeinu is in a completely different sphere. Moshe Rabbeinu is... He experiences in the world differently. He experiences it in Vua. Yeah. Shlomo, Shlomo experiences it once, like these little pak times. Yeah, but like Moshe like, speaks to Hashem. Right. He doesn't like, get it through dreams or other... Okay, that, that, that's another level we're talking about. I'm talking about even the basic... I agree. He's going to talk about dreams a little later and the different, different elements. But I'm saying that's already within prophecy, the levels of prophecy. Here there's a break between... Sh Shlomo was not a prophet most of the time. So there, on, on, a, on a regular... Like, if you think, who do you think when you think of a prophet? Who do you think of? Well, yeah, Moshe Rabbeinu, right? Yeah, Eliyahu, Shmuel, maybe. With Shmuel, there seems to be a very easy connection between Shmuel and Hashem. Yishayahu, Yirmiyahu, they're bringing prophecies all there. Shlomo Amalek, how many prophecies does he bring from Hashem? None, right? None. We see Hashem appears to him, right? This is the whole, the whole Mahabim is based on this, that they're like a couple times in Shlomo's life that Hashem did. And this is what Shir Shirim is. The whole song is historically based on events of Shlomo in his own life of meeting Hashem. That's why the Malbim is very careful. I'm just saying, again, the Malbim is playing off the thing itself. He's saying Shlomo himself is defining prophecy. It's wonderful for people like us who haven't experienced prophecy, and it's nice to hear what it's like, but, but it's, it's still wisdom explaining prophecy, which is inexplainable in a sense. That's really the whole story. The whole story that's inexplainable, but Shlomo, who was not of prophecy. Shlomo really, his essence is not a prophet. He's a chacham. But Shlomo's like, mission with prophecy wasn't to rebuke the people. No, n prophecy never th isn't necessarily to rebuke. No, the prophets in his time were... So I'm going to say, it's an important thing to know. Pr prophecy, according to the Malbim, is the experience of Hashem okay. uh, on, a, so it's not, on a higher level. It's, yeah. it, it's, not, it's not a job. Yeah, it's not uh, Hosea all the time. Oshea has prophecy. What he does with his prophecy is X. But we're talking about the prophetic experience as opposed to prophetic statements. So I'll go back to what we learned in the beginning, right? The Gemara says there were more than 600,000 prophets in Israel. Double, double 600, 120,000. There were more than 120,000 prophets in Israel. Ever hear what they said? 600,000, that's how to nine, 600, <laughs> no, Okay, even if I give you that, how many prophets do you guys know? Can you name on one, two hands? 48 prophets the Gemara and Megillah brings down. 40, and they throw all kinds of people in, here we go, maybe, yes, maybe, no. We don't know how many prophets. But the prophecy was very relevant. It was relevant for many, many people. It was something, it's something what people now are trying to attain. In, 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 in school, other schools, there are people who are trying to attain prophecy. So the prophecy, the, the, the task of prophecy, prophecy is actually not to bring some information from here to, 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 to the human, human to receive it. What is it good for them? Like, for, for the one who don't 
<laughs> deliver a message. What's like, it good for? Oh, like, yeah. Hashem, right? yeah, that's what it is. Just to experience Hashem. Yeah, that's what it is. So we can experience it, Hashem to it's, what, it's, what, it's what you're supposed to do in this world. Now, I remind you, when you get to this level of, of that, you also bring Hashem into the world. In other, it's, a, it's a movement that happens. This, this, this kissing, that's what he calls, right? He calls it a neshika. This kiss with Hashem helps reveal Hashem in the world. In other words, it breaks reality. Your, your, connect, your prophetic connection uh, through osmosis affects the rest of the world also. So there is an effect that happens there. Um, but it's not necessarily what you're trying to do. You're trying to reach your utmost potential as, as uh, what, you're so, what, you, what you are, in a sense. You are godly. Remember we talked about the godliness inside you? This is what you're trying to do in this world. He's talked about how, it, how that is interconnected to the rest of the world also. So you, if you want to have a nice mindset of tikkun olam and helping other people and not be egocentric in a sense, which is, I think it's sort of what you're talking about, Nakhon, what good does it do? Yeah, if you get it, you're free. So you got a prophecy, wonderful. What is what we're looking at? Right, so <laughs> that, that statement is like, are we just here for ourselves? Are we just here? So the Malbim gives it another thing that when you do that, it changes the world. So I don't, but really, as your job, you're supposed to be reaching this this place of of, of a prophetic experience. So, um, Ken. So so again, he says that smolo tachat the roshi v'yimino techab keni. His his left arm is under my hand, and his right arm hugs me. He says, obviously, the right arm is what I want to do. I want to be hugged. I don't want just the left under my my head. He says sometimes, the le- or not sometimes, in, in the process of prophecy, often the small has to come first. The small comes first. In other words, you have to be, as we said, and nevuah, shura, ela, chacham, yibor, ve, ashir. Right? There, the, the, a prophet has to have a lot, a lot of, uh, of, of characteristics that allow him to reach prophecy. One of them is searching and attempting to do this. Most prophets were not suddenly given prophecy. They reach this level where they're able to receive prophecy, as the Rambam says. In Leo's time, there were like prophetic schools. For sure, for sure. We talked about it. in Elisha's time even more. Okay. Yeshivat Bnei Nice school. Huh? Yes, it's a nice name. Yeshivat Bnei Oi. Okay. Ready? We're going to finish that up. This is it. Pesuk Zayin is the end of the story. We've been here for a long time. But this is it. Okay? So now he says, the last Pesuk, according to the Malbim, of the first song. Right? They quote correctly. Okay. I, I swear you, but not you shall I, by the deer and the ayalota sade, the gazelles of the of the field. If you awaken or you uh, 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 shake. We'll have to see how he goes, the different perushim here. Et ava ad tichpatz. Now, what exactly is he saying? He's talking to Benot Yushalayim. Who's Benot Yushalayim, according to the Malbim? The physicality. The physicality, the powers of the body, right? The powers of the body are Benot Yushalayim. So he's doing something with them. He's saying something to them. He's, he's making them swear. He's swearing them about something. What exactly is he saying? Let's finish this up in the Malbim, then we're going to go back in Tarashi for the whole chapter. Ishbati betoch kach. So here the Malbim the ma- in an in uh, uh, unfortunate or uh, tragic moment, the body is still there and it starts waking up. And Shlomo, who's in the prophetic state, suddenly is hungry. <laughs> I've said that's sort of what you would see. He's suddenly hungry. And it's like a dissonance. It's like, why am I hungry? What is hunger? Right, Moshe is on Har Sinai for how long? 40 days and 40 nights and doesn't eat and doesn't drink, right? It's, it's not relevant in the prophetic state. And here he suddenly he's like, I'm hungry. I'm tired. Uh, the, the powers of the body suddenly start fracturing the, 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 the consciousness of him. So this is what the Mahabim says, this is what's happening. Okay? 
והנפש האלוהית משבעת את בנות ירושלים. So the נפש האלוהית, which is in its element at the moment, in the prophetic element, makes the בנות ירושלים, שהם כוחות הגבייה, בל ישבתו את האהבה הנפשית ודיבוקה בצור עוזה. לא לרחק ולא לקרב. He says, stay away from me. Stay away from me. I am now in my uh, element. I'm, I'm, the, the soul says I'm connected to God. I don't want you here. Please. כי גם התעוררות האהבה הזאת באמצעות כוחות החומריות היא אש זרה. Even love that you feel in a sense, love for Hashem, that can also be a foreign, a foreign fire, a fire, ish zara, a fire that's not commanded. Because it's not on the level. Remember we talked about even the, the love we have and the way we portray love, that is also a, a human feeling. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's within the, 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 physica, the physical feelings. He says even that's not good. ואהבה בלתי נקייה מפניות חיציונות רק עד שתכפץ אהבה בעצמה בהתעודדות הרוח להידבק ברוח אלוהים. He says, I don't want any of you here, I don't want any of you, I don't want the regular bodily uh, um, sensory things happening here. Stay away, that's what he wants. השפעתי אתכם, please stay away. וכל שכן שלא יביטו על זה שהטילו איבה בינה לבין דודה, of course not to cause pain and anger between her and, and Hashem. Um, by pulling her to, uh, to loves of, low loves like coffee cake and sleep and other things that we sometimes like to do. Clearly, that's, that's not good. Um, and he says, And because the soul at this point was in the desert outside the city that managed to get away from the Gviya and it's, and it's connected to Hashem, Whatever he explains is like an in-between situation between the, the prophetic soul and the regular soul, and that's the the, uh, the the nefesh, what he calls the nefesh is like is is like the spirituality in between the body and the and the soul. In 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 in, uh, in Hasidut and others, they talk about what, working on the nefesh is like the the lowest level of soul. The nefesh, okay? It's like the it's like the spirituality of the body. He says that's the that's the interplay, that's the connector between the spiritual side and the not spiritual side. And that that's the ayalot and the tzvot asadeh. He pro, he makes the that that connection. He makes them swear not to break off the love. Um, but then he, then he finishes up the last line you have there: Ruach Hakodesh Allah Me'al Nefesh Lomo. והיא הושבה על ידי שהקיצו כוחות הגבירה להיסגר בבית כלא החומר כבתחילה. The story has a tragic end, this chapter. It's like, it's like a play. It sort, of, it sort of sounds like, it's like that line sounds like a play, if you've ever, ever read a play, right? And now it descends what happened. After the, 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 the dialogue, this is what happens. The curtain comes down, the play ends, this, this act ends. As Shlomo does not manage to stay in the prophetic stand, even though he's, he made them swear and he tried to keep them off. And Manasut. So the, the next part of the chapter, that we won't see this time probably, will begin the next song. The next song going to Shlomo is talking about the next time he, he receives prophecy. So the, and then he explains it, and it's a different kind of prophecy this time. The first one is full fledged prophecy, the second one is. Not exactly full-fledged prophecy. It's sort of a, a different kind of prophecy. That I'll talk about. It's going to be short. Bezat Hashem. Tov. Rashi, Rabotai. Um, but Rashi, <laughs> Rashi, remember him? We saw him once a long time ago. All right, so Rashi, as I told you guys, really is... Um, the way he explains this, this chapter is he says it's sort of like uh, delving deeper into... He says in Pasuk Chet, that the Mishore is going to go back and delve deeper into what, what's, what he said beforehand. But it's interesting how Rashi's own, own, own perush becomes more and more metaphoric. If in on chapter 1, he sort of took, took more time explaining 
Right? Remember how she said, if you guys, are, I don't remember who remembers, it was uh, 10 lessons ago or 9 lessons ago, when we learned the, the Akadama of Rashi, Rashi said, listen, I'm going to explain to you the Pshat, and I'm going to explain to you what it says. You should know that the Midrash is the Ikar, obviously, but you have to understand what it says to understand the Midrash. So in the first chapter, Ben Met, he, he explained the words and the concepts a little more. As, as it shifts, as he goes on, Rashi sort of slips more and more into the, just the Midrash. Okay? He's less, less into the, the ex- explanation of the storyline as much and really brings the Midrash, which is the more important part, obviously, because that's what Shirashim is about, according to Rashi. Just so you guys you remember what the storyline is, according to Rashi? Rashi says, who's saying it? What? Two loves? Like, uh, no. He's saying, this is Amisil and Galut. Shlomo writes this prophetically of a story of when Amisil being Galut, what they say to Hashem in a remembrance, in a sense. In other words, it's a love song uh, of, of what was and what, what they're hoping will be again, but it's really memory. It's talking about how much they miss what happened, right? They say they're the Aguna, right? The Almana, they're the. the we are Amisa like the the widow who's uh, waiting for the beloved to come back. Uh, you know, a widow is her husband's dead in that case, but this is a, this is not that Almanut Chayut he called it, right? That their husband's missing and the wife is without him, and she's remembering all the good things that happened in the past, and here and there also remembering the reasons that he left her and the reasons that there were breaks and and, and problems. The Bigadol, that's the storyline. And we'll see that Be'emet, this whole chapter almost has to deal with the desert. Okay, the desert, what happened in the desert. Next chapter, we're going to start reaching a little further in, in history than just the desert. But all of chapter one, if you guys remember also, was Yitzhak Mitzrayim in the desert. That's where he's going to deal with it now. So now it will help to have a Tanakh open, okay, because Rashi really goes pasuk pasuk here. Okay, as opposed to the Malbim, when we started off, <laughs> and there was forever between Pasuk and Pasuk, and it wouldn't have helped to go through Pasuk and Pasuk. Rashi's pretty quick. Uh, we should be able to handle it till the end of this class. Okay? So, Shira Shirim, chapter 2. <clears throat> so, it starts off right on Nicha Vatzelet Asharon Shoshanat Amakim. I am a flower, the flower of the lily of the Sharon, right? Um, Rashi doesn't, doesn't say anything about this, okay? Rashi starts off in the Chavatzel Shoshana, it's the same flower, and they're, they're nice, nice flowers, so they're lokriti, remember how much the Malbim went into explaining what the flower means, and what this flower is opposed to that flower in the, in the Valley. Rashi just goes right through it. All right, so, but then in the next pasuk he goes, Keshoshana ben achochim ken rayati ben abanot. Right, so this is the, the dod, right, the, 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 the male figure. It says, you are like a lily between the thorns. So says Rashi in pasuk bet, shem nakvim otat v'tamid yomedet benoya v'ad mimuta. Who do you think the thorns are going to be? Oh, the, the, the goyim, every, every, almost everything's the goyim, according to Rashi. Right? Almost every Shoshana. every bad thing are the bad people. The Shoshana is then a rose, not a lily. A lily yeah. doesn't have thorns. Okay, it could be a rose in this case. It's, it's the same word they use in the Tanakh. Okay, so it makes sense. That, that, right, there are. Even though it could be a lily among thorns, if it's not the thorns itself. They're trying to puncture it, but it still is always... Red, which may fit into rose more. Ken rayati ben abanot mefatot otah lirdof acharim liznot kmotam achay elohim acharim v'yom endet b'emunata. This vision is Am Yisrael with among the nations, where they keep on trying to convince Am Yisrael to come. The fatot means to uh, seduce Am Yisrael for them to go learn after their gods, go after their gods, but it stays red. It stays a lily. Or it says a rose, as Shakespeare said, a rose with any other name would be as sweet or something like that. Something like that. Something nice like that. But whatever it is, a rose is a rose is a rose in this case. Amisil is Amisil is Amisil, no matter what. Even though the nations are trying to pull him away, there is something unique about Amisil. Now this picture of a Shoshana ben Achochim is a very, very 
basic Jewish picture. Shoshana ben achochim, a rose or a lily among the thorns. That's among the thorns. What? That's how the uh, yeah, Vadai he talks they, about they this. Shoshana. Like they're white and they're red to the, the Shoshana. No, then also the, the, the leaves, right? The Shlosh Yisraelim, that they're, they're at different points. But this concept is this idea of Am Yisrael is always unique within the, 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 the people that are around there, that people are always trying to pull and push and, and, and convince there's something that Am Yisrael says. So, the, so this is a, a statement that Hashem says about Am Yisrael, right? Pasugim bet is Hashem, not Pasugim. Ketapuach ba'atzei ayar ken dodi ben abanim. So if we're like a lily among the among the thorns, then he's like an apple among the trees. Okay? What does that mean? Says Rashi. Kitapuach. Right? Again, the same thing. The, the same Malbim talked about. The apple tree among many other non-fruit trees. Kendo di benabanim. Says Rashi. Hadugma. Kach HaKadosh Baruch Hu Mikol HaElohim. Sort of makes sense. If Am Yisrael is unique among all the nations, then Hashem is unique among all the gods. Nivchar. Lefichach betzilo chimanti v'yashavti. Right? Therefore, Hashem is the, is the unique God, and I want to see it with Him. Even though there are many, many, many trees in the world, there are many ideologies out there, there are many cultures out there, there are many belief systems out there, we stick with you. Um, the Midrash, now he goes on, a Midrash Agada. <laughs> there's a Midrash here, there's an always big Midrash, Rashi actually doesn't bring the Midrash so much. Midrash Agada. HaTapuach haZe HaKol Borchim Emenu, Lefi She'en Lo Tzel. Everyone runs away from the tapuach. The tapuach is this little tree. In our, I, I could, I could, la'id, I could bear witness that in our, our garden, we have these big trees. The zayit is big, and the carob is big, and then even the rimon is somewhat big, but the apple tree, man, it's like this big. It's been there for 15 years, and it has not grown very far. It bothers me very much. But apparently, even then, it wasn't a big tree. It's a, it's a, it's a it's a bend down and figure. It's it's not it's not, it's not a big tree and hasn't really grown. It's a different it's a different size. I guess in Aritz, I think in Chutzlar they get a little bigger. Yeah, but in what uh, kind of tree and the ground and uh, no, I'm not talking about a bonsai. <laughs> this this one was supposed to grow. It's not growing very well. It's maybe our fault. But whatever it is, this picture of a, a small tree is, is like apparently clear. Shlomo, that's what he says. The, the apple tree was small and it wasn't so. It didn't give such a great thing. Even so, he says, everyone ran away from the tapuach, but we didn't. Everyone ran away, didn't want the tapuach, didn't want to have anything to do with it. What midrash is he referencing here? That what? Offering the Torah to others, right? The Ben Hashem went around offering the Torah to all the nations, and everyone, for whatever reason, didn't want it. And Am Yisrael said, not seven Ishma, we're going to take it anyway. So, 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 what, so what is these two Psikim bringing out? The, the, the undying love or the undying, um, undying yeah, manut, losing, faithful, loyalty, faith, yeah. loyalty, faithfulness, faithfulness. I would say it's faithful. Less faithfulness, faithfulness and loyalty. These are the two. That's what it sees of the Pshat Namsukim, right? He says, my, my, my beloved is like this. She says, my beloved is like this. He puts into this picture of Amisel not being affected by the others and Hashem remaining loyal to Amisel. So, so this, uh, this is the picture. Um, brought me to Beit Hayain. So here he also says, "What's Beit Hayain? Oil moed. Shesham nitnu pratea ubiarea shel Torah." Rashi, throughout, likens the wine to the Torah. That's what he. That's usually his thing. It's interesting. As far as the Malbim talks about the wine as prophecy, he has the wine often as, as the Torah in, in the Mashallah and his explanation of Shira Shirim. So Hashem brought me to the oil moed. And there he gave me the pratim and the biurim shel the Torah. Um, is that where Hashem gave him the pratim and the biurim of the Torah, or was it on Har Sinai where he gave him the the the, the explanations of the Torah? Where did he get the explanations of the Torah? So why does Rashi say Oel Moed? Shisham Oel Moed. Betayin, the house of wine, is the Oel Moed. 
And there they were given the Pratim. It's the bait, it's the bait Midrash, the, the oil mayat. It's where, where, where you sit, sit down and drink the, drink the wine. To, but to, where did, to, where to did, learn it. It's where they like, learn it one, more. One, one guy on, the, on, the, on the, the top of the hill received it. The, the person down, the, the down wouldn't, it doesn't get anything. He'll, he gets it at the oil mayat. Okay, it could be. It could be. Even though Shisham Nitnu Prateo Bireja Tara, it sounds more. I hear, you, I hear what you're saying. I don't think I don't think that's what he means. But 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 it is a, a good teru. It's now and the other teru is more is the Ramban. The Ramban who says that that oil mu'ed, the oil mu'ed is supposed to be a continuation of our Sinai. The Ramban, important Ramban, talks about how the the Sinaiic experience moved into a house into the oil mu'ed. And that's why everything's made out of gold, to, is like the fire, that's why the kruvim, because they see Hashem, right? Masa Merkava. The idea is really to take the event of Har Sinai and move it to there. And what, what's supposed to happen on the, on the Aron? What happens in the Aron, in, in the Mishkan? Hashem talks to Moshe from there. That's what it says, right? Hashem talks to him through, from the kruvim. In other words, just like I talked to you in Har Sinai, it just moved down. It's like they, they, they took the, they packaged it up, put it in small, and brought it into the Mishkan. That's really not, the Mishkan is a moving Har Sinai. That's really what it's supposed to be. So that according to the Ramban, and I think this is what he's hinting to also that there was a continuous development that Hashem explains parts of the Torah in Har Sinai. It went on. Anyway, again, um, let's jump to uh, Pasuk. Uh, hey. Seder, Pesuke says Rashi, Samchuni Bashishot Rabduni Batapuchim Ki Cholata Ava Ani. And as he says here, if you guys look in the where it's uh, bolded in Rashi and Pesuke, Ki Cholani Lavato, Ki Tzameti Lopo Begaluti. Says Rashi, I am thirsty for him here in my Galut. So Cholata Ava Ani is a break in the storyline. Okay, the storyline is telling the history. And then, he says, I am so, uh, I, I miss it. I miss it. I'm sick with my love for you, Hashem. That's a, that's a the storyteller is saying it, right? Right, right, right? right in literature, sometimes you have a storyteller who's telling the story, and suddenly you meet the storyteller himself. Right, I'm sorry. Good Ariel's not here to kick me now. Did everyone see the movie The Princess Bride? It's an American thing, huh? According to the nose here, it's an American. Anyway, there's like a movie where he tells a story, and then the movie is a story, and then suddenly it breaks. It's like the father telling a son a story. So sometimes, right in the middle of the movie, it stops, and you go back oh, yeah, yeah. to the father telling the story. In yeah. other words, uh, so there's a, that concept of, of the storyteller breaking the story and coming out of the story. This is what's happening here. Okay, you could draw Sherlock Holmes. What? Simpler. You could draw Sherlock Holmes. Where it also happens. Speak, I think after the Holmes died. Maybe uh, I'm not as Bucky and Sherlock Holmes. I have read most of them, but it was a very, very long time ago. Um, so, but, but this, this, this is what's happening. I know here he's talking about uh, Har Sinai, and we're very into into the desert and the connection with Hashem that happens there. And suddenly he says, "I am sick with love." Isn't a statement of "I was sick with love." I am sick with love right now, as I'm talking about and remembering what happened. I am sick with love. That's what happens to you. Again, Shlomo's, it, 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 all time frames here are off. Shlomo's, Shlomo, who happened after Yitzhak Mitzrayim, is talking about the future of what we will say when we're in the future. In the future, when we're talking about Yitzhak Mitzrayim, we're going to suddenly say, I am sick with love. Is that but I, I think part of the basis of what Rashi is saying here, Shira Shirim, the love song to Hashem, is why, is why we read it on Pesach also, but why what is it supposed to do to us reading the Torah? Reading the Torah, reading our history, reading the stories of the Torah um, are supposed to reawaken in us the, this love that we have for Hashem. That's what's really supposed to happen. That's the point of, of Pesach in that sense. The point of Pesach, what, what, do you, what, do you, what, do you, what are you, you, you going to get from, from talking about what happened in, 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 in Yitzhak Mitzrayim? Besides knowing things that were there's something more that's supposed to happen to us. We're supposed to reawaken and, and thirst for that connection that we had there. So in the said in the Galut, what do you have left? What do you have here, Bichla? 
you have a nice story, Pseder, but we're trying to get to Kicholat Ava. I mean, that's what I, you're supposed to awaken into this statement that I really, really want you to, could, to go back to all these good things. Pseder. He goes on now to more things about about uh, about the things, and of course, look at Pasuk Zayin just to mashved to the, the Malbim. The Pasuk Zayin was the last Pasuk in the Malbim talking about Reish Bati Etchem Benot Yushalayim. So Benot Yushalayim by the Malbim are the powers of the body. By Rashi, they're the Umot Olam, right? Reish Bati Etchem Olot Olam, Bitzvot by Alot, Shetiu Hefker Umachal Ketzvayim Uilim. It's it's a threat. I'm I'm threatening you. I'm 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 swearing you. As that you will be uh, destroyed if you if you do what? Im ta'irim tororu et ahava. You guys with me in pasuk zayin? Shebeni ledodi leshanotau lachlifa lovakesh miyonen litpatot achrechem. I am cursing you if you try to take pull me away from God. I'm cursing you. You pull me away from God. Uh, you should you should be your 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 flesh should be hefker should be uh, how do you say hefker? Ownerless should be open to all the beasts of the of the of the, of the field. That's a, it's it's a, it's a curse to them. Okay. Im tasnim ta'iru Rashi says im im tasniu. If you cause Hashem to hate me, if you cause me to be hated, how would they cause me to be hated? By following your your things. And again, this is another break in reality. Okay. When it, when did Am Yisrael say this? Im, when is this statement being said? Im ta'iru v'toru ata vayishbati etchem benot yushalayim. He's not talking about back then. He's talking about now. Okay? He's talking about now. He's saying, in Galut, when we're being influenced by all the nations, the one who's cholat ava says, don't make off my love. Don't shake, break, curse the love I have between me and Hashem. Don't, don't break it. Right? Don't cause a hatred instead of a a love that I have for Hashem. Again, it's, it's fascinating how different it is, th this Perush from, from the Mabi Perush. As Rashi is talking about the very, very fragile state of Am Yisrael in exile. Okay, Am Yisrael is holding on to a thread here in, in exile, remembering the glamour, the glamour days, the glory days of, of, of the desert, and getting sick with love, and realizing that the nations threaten, threaten her connection with Hashem. They realize they, they get to happen. Fascinating what it was, huh? What he was talking, he talking about. about okay. Like, no, he's talking about the future. Rashi says the whole book is a prophetic is a prophetic book, mamash. Okay, it's not talking future about future centuries or future Romans. Who knows when? Or Nebuchadnezzar, right? We we don't we know. We're talking. I don't know when. Maybe all of exiles. All of exiles is the feeling of Am Yisrael when you are. You are bereft. You don't have. You're you're out of your country. You don't know if you have your God. You don't know if you have your people. Everything's up in the air. You're very, it's, a, it's a very fragile situation, and that's why he has to he has to lash out at the nations as he stay away from me in a sense. Stay away from me. Don't break my connection with Hashem, because they're trying really hard. They really tried. The really tried. Now again, Rashi has the has the <laughs> Rashi in his perush has the uh, benefit of hindsight, right? Rashi's talking. Rashi's living the exile. And he sees Shir Hashim. He says, Whoa, this is Mamash Matim to what's going on here, to the way we, we live. Right? We, we, and, and understand. That's why he explains it his way. The Malbim actually also lived in exile and could have gone in Rashi's way. He just reads it completely differently. So there, but let's continue in Rashi's vein, okay? Um, okay. Kol dodi, pasuk chet. Kol dodi. Now look at the Rashi. Kol dodi nezeba medaleg al harim. So when is this happening now? My 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 beloved is coming. He's jumping over the mountains. He's jumping over the hills. He's like a hind. He's like a deer. Here he comes. He's standing behind our walls. He's looking through the cracks. Um, and then he says, wake up, come, the, the, the stav avar, I'm reading the psukim themselves, the stav avar, ageshem chalaf, um, it's, it's springtime, come on out, let's go, come, lechirach rayati, lechilach, go, 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 come outside, go outside. That all fits very well into 
Pesach and Yitziat Mitzrayim Mamash. That's the classic Jewish understanding of these Pesukim, okay, according to Rashi. So here Rashi explains, look at the Pesuk Chet, Rashi and Pesuk Chet. He says like this, Chozer HaMeshorer Rishonot. Now he's going back. Going back to Yitziat Mitzrayim. Ke Adam Shekitzer Dvarav Vechozer Vomer Lo Amarti Lifnechem Reshit Advarim. He says, it's right I told you about when Hashem appeared to Mitzrayim, but, but I did it quickly and generally. Now I want to go back and talk specifically of what happened on Mash and Yitziat Mitzrayim. So according to Rashi, it's an interesting statement. Going back. We're going back again to Yitziat Mitzrayim and talk about the, 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 the seder of exactly what happened here. Okay, so again, let's read him from the, I'm reading Rashi again from the beginning here in Chet. Chozer HaMeshorer Al Rishonot. He's returning to the first things he talked about. Ki Adam Shekitzer Dvarav, like someone who said something very shortly and, and succinctly, and then he wants to go back and say it at length, okay? Vechozer Vomer, Lo Amarti Lifnechem Reshit Advarim. I didn't tell you the beginning of everything, I just told you the, the summary. Hu Itchil Ve'amar Hevyani HaMelech Hadarav. He said, Hashem brought me to his room. But he didn't say how he saved me from Mitzrayim. He says, let me tell you where I was. When I told you how, the beginning, how we started, Perek Aleph of, of Hashem breaking on Yisrael out of Mitzrayim and, and Hashem appearing, saying, one second, there's a backstory to this. I was at my wit's end. I was nuash. I was almost despairing of, 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 of Geula. The, the situation was horrible. I was completely not, not, uh, I was in what, what Chazal called Memtet Sharei Tumah, right? The 49 gates of impurity. That's the situation I was in. It starts from the really bad, and then suddenly, kol dodi hinezeba, the voice of my 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 beloved came. It was that kind of shock. You say it was, it was really the low of the low. Okay, kol dodi hinezeba says Rashi on the next page. Kol dodi hinezeba lifnei aketz. Okay, and he goes on. Domedo di letzvi. I'm going to explain both of them in a second. Okay. Domedo di letzvi, he's like a, a, a quick, a, a deer that goes quickly. The kalut marutzato, that as quickly as he runs. Shemiher lavo, he came quicker than usual. Read one more. Hine ze omed achar kotlenu, svura iti deshev aguna od yamim rabim. Vine wodiya she yo omedu metzitz min achalonot. Rashi is playing off a midrash here that says that Hashem saved Am Yisrael quicker than they had to be. They were supposed to be 400 years, and it was less than 400 years. You, I don't know if you guys know, there's like all kinds of cheshbonot, because Hashem says to Avram, they're going to, to avdu vinu tam arba shana. Hashem says to Avram, they're going to make them serve 400 years. And it's very hard to get to the cheshbon of the years, which we actually have the cheshbon of the years, because we know how, how much everyone how old everyone was. We know how old Yos Yaakov is when he dies, and Yosef is when he dies, and Yitzchak is when he dies, and Moshe is when he dies, and Moshe, right? We, we know, and Levi is that when he dies, we, we know how old people were. We could actually figure it out. And it's not 400 years that they're in, in servitude. Okay, what? So there's 210, there's 86. There are different numbers of actually how to exactly understand. Because the question is, when Hashem said Avram, you're going to work there for 400 years. When does it start? Since people say it started from Yitzchak's Leida, it starts, whatever it is, it's, it's, there's a, a set of time that has to work. And according to all the explanations, it was quicker. It seemed to be quicker than it, than it should have been or than the numbers should have been. This is what Rashi is referencing, that Hashem came quick. Hashem came surprisingly. We were waiting for the long run, but Hashem came quicker than, than we thought. It's a chesed that Hashem did to, for us. Okay? Um, so he came and he said to me, Rashi says, Anav amini kumilach, rayati yafati kumilach, which Rashi clearly plays. That's when they said, come, I'm going to take you out of Egypt. By who? Who said it? Moshe. Right? So look at the next one, Pasuk Yud. Called the Ana, right? Uh, Pasuk Yud is, Ana dodi ve'amarli, Ana al yedei Moshe. Hashem, Answered us through, or 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 spoke to us through Hashem, through Moshe Rabbeinu. Say there, 
which fits into the storyline. So now I'm just going to go quickly. I've said, it says, so now Pasuk Yud Aleph and Pasuk Yud Bet and Pasuk Yud Gimel are talking about all the, the time frame of when Hashem took them. He took them in the spring when it's nice and there's no more rain and there are birds out there and people enjoy themselves and it's fun to walk in the spring as opposed to the, to the, to the, to the winter. Okay? This is Mamash what he says. Mamash is I'm, re- I'm jumping over Rashi and Pasuk Yud and Pasuk Yud Bet. Both he's saying how the, the birds all chirp and it's fun when the birds chirp. It's a, it's a, and a nice feeling instead of the silence of the winter. Okay? Um, and he says, Look at Yud Gimel, where the bold is in Yud Gimel. Just like a lover tempts his beloved with all these be- with beauty. So Hashem told us out of, the, of, of Mitzrayim in the right time, the right place, in, uh, in the good season, to just pull us out of Egypt. That's, that, was, that was the point. Let's take us out. All this is is from Hashem's love from us to try to tempt us to leave. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. It's, it's hard for me. Rashi, Rashi just goes over the story here of Mitzrayim. Says Moshe Rabbeinu went to them. They took them out. They jumped over the time. Um, he got everything ready for them. Um, you're going to say Shira, right? Eta Zamir Higia, the time of, of singing comes. When's the singing? Which singing? Shira Tayam. Uh, these things are pretty uh, intu- intuitive. Okay, when you read the Midrash here, and what it so says, sing is this, bird is this, taking out is this. All the things are, are, are seem. Uh, it's time to go into Eretz Israel and, 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 and eat the fruit there. Okay? Um, Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll jump one. Look at Pasuk Yud Gimel, okay? It says in Pasuk Yud Gimel, the, it's, it's fruit are getting ready, they're almost ready. We said that the grapes are, are reaching the point of being, of being uh, done. Now, if you guys look inside, it doesn't say kumilach, it says kumilachi. You see? Look at the wording. You see it? It says kumilachi. On the side, there's a lach. Because that's how you're supposed to say it. It's a Korean ktiv, okay? That was, it says lechi. It really, we read it as lach, kumilach. We don't say kumilachi. But Rashi here is going to play around with that lechi. You guys, look at kumilachi. You see in, in Yud Gimel? Kumi lechi. Ktiv yud yetera. There's an extra yud there. It should be kumi lach rayati. It says kumi lechi rayati, which seems go, right? Walk. So Rashi says, Kumi lach le kabel aseret adibrot. Go ten. <laughs> right, so it says, go ten. Lechi. Lech yud. Go get your Ten Commandments. Go get the Ten Commandments. That's what he's saying. Or another way to explain it. So here Rashi goes off on two different directions. One, he's talking about going to receive the Ten Commandments. And the other, when he talks about the Tenach and Tafagia, he says, sometimes the the... The, um, the, the fig tree that has gotten to the situation where the figs are ready to come, sometimes they don't, they don't get ready at the end of the day. He says that's a hint to all the people who died in the three days of, of darkness. You guys know the Midrash? Good, okay, so, so he's referencing that. Um, and and, and, and the, the, the grapes that smell good are the ones who remained and did tshuva. So again, Going through the story. Um, let's, let's finish up Rashi here. Hashmini, when Hashem says, Hashmini et kolech, when does he want to hear their voice? On Yam Suf, when they're right before getting, when, you know, if we know rock in a hard place and they yell out to Hashem, that's what I wanted to hear. And.
So there are two things I want to do here. I want to do Pasuk Tetvav and I want to do Pasuk Yud Zayin, okay? Pasuk Tetzvah, the, the rest again continues this, but Pasuk Tetzvah has a funny, a funny wording, right? Suddenly we said it's a little strange um, that, that we saw that Hashem is protecting Am Yisrael and bringing Am Yisrael out of Mitzrayim, and then suddenly there are little foxes. Remember the Pasuk of the foxes? The Chazula nu Shualim. Shualim Ktanim Mechablim Kramim. It was, it, was a, it, was a, it was a point that sounded off, sounded less happy. Less happy than we would want. Okay, shualim k'tanim yichablim kramim. So the Malbim is going to explain it in a certain way. But the way he explains it is like this. You guys look at the Pasuk Tetvav. Echazu lanu shualim. Shama kadosh baruchu et kolam. Tziva tayam ushtafam. Right, Hashem heard our voices and he washed away. Zeu achazu lanu shualim alalu aktanim im agdolim. She'af aktanim ayu mechablim et akramim beod kramenu smadar. So here is a, is a midrashic critique of the G Egyptians. Hold on, it's, it's, uh, it's uncomfortable, it's a sad kind of uh, midrash. That Hashem says, he's killing the young together with the old. If you want to hear anything modern, you could hear whatever you want to hear. That you kill the, the little mechablim, like the big mechablim. What would it with the little mechablim? Ready? Kshaita, and I'll go over, I'm in the bold again in, in Tetvav. Okay, the second line in Tetvav. And here's the Midrash. Kshaita bat Yisrael yoledet zachar v'hi tomanuto. What would happen in the decree that the firstborns would all be killed? A woman would be pregnant. She would have a male child. She would hide the male child because he's in danger of death. V'ayu ha-mitzvim nichasim lebatehem u-mechapsim et ha-scharim v'atinok tamun v'u ben shana u ben shnatayim. And the, the, the kid is hidden. They can't find him. So what do they do? They would bring a Egyptian baby. Year, two years. And the child would start gurgling or talking. What does a baby do when he hears another baby gurgling? When he hears people yelling and shouting, sometimes he cries, but sometimes he freezes. But when you hear a baby gurgling, the baby gurgles back. So the Jewish baby would gurgle back. They would find him and throw him into the into the or into the, the Nile. So why do they call them foxes? So just like the fox looks back when it runs. I don't know. Have you ever seen a fox run? Does it look back when it runs? I think it stops. It looks back. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. But he says like foxes look back. So the Egyptians were also looking back. But the idea of the little foxes, he's saying even the little Egyptians were part of of the of of the what they were doing to Am Yisrael, even the, even the little ones. So when he says, "Why? What is the justification of of hurting the Egyptians?" It was a team effort in the Egyptians' part. Again, you could say it wasn't their fault that their parents brought them to gurgle in the in the house. But that's what Rashi points out as a, as a little Egyptian. A little, little Egyptians like the Shualim Tanim, not only Shualim Gdolim. Um, let's go to the last pasuk. Okay, last pasuk. So, Pasuk Tetzaz says, Dodi li vani lo haro'e bashoshim. He's for me, I'm for him. Beautiful. And then suddenly, Ad shiafu achayom venasu atzalim sov dmelecha dodi letzvi olo faralim al harei bater. Turn around and run away like a, like a deer. Like, whoa, 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 one second. Where is he going? We, they were just getting so close. Where is he going? Says Rashi, what happened? Dodi li vanilo, right? Hashem is for me and I'm for him. Ad zman shegaram havon. Nasu atzlalim, chatanu ba'egel, chatanu ba'meraglim. Venasu atzlalim, zchuyot ha'beginot alenu farakti ulo. Once we started sinning in cheta egel, cheta meraglim, all the shade that was protecting us disappears. 
סוב דמי לך דודי, גרמתי לו להסתלק מעליי על הרים המופלגים ממני, I caused him to separate himself from me. Okay, so here the chapter ends in a, in a, in a, in a not happy tone, okay, as the, the separation of the beloved from the lover, whatever, from the male, from the female in this case, that Rashi says, we were in such a good situation, in Siyaz Mitzrayim, is it? But we caused the Sofoshes of our separation. So there, all these things are the, the, the Amisrael and Galut remembering their history and understanding that their history is a series of closeness and breaking away. And in a sense, I think it's saying and the, uh, the subtext of this statement, according to Rashi, is we've been here before. We've been, we've been here, done that. We've been separated before. It's time to reestablish the connection. So Shira Shirim is, is, is a, is a, 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 how do you say that? To comfort or console ourselves also. And say, even though we remember the way it was, we remember also the bad things we did, but, but there's a possibility of returning to, to be together again. So that's why Shir Shirim, even though it's, again, said in exile, is really, in a sense, a sad one, a sad thing, but has an undertone of, of uh, consolation. So that's right.